it good? Yeah. All right. How am I going to start this? What is happening, people? It is Brian Alls with NeverState.com, and welcome to a little bit different video because today we are cooking, we are cooking with Elena. So if you guys did not know, this is my wife Elena Alzru, who has also been a Maryland Strongest Man, woman. Woman. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the air is going to definitely I'm not a man, that. I promise. <laughs> anyway, uh, if you guys did not know, one of my favorite foods in the world is breakfast burritos. And actually, um, when I was really sick, when I was throwing up like 50 times a day, every single day, um, it was one of the only things I could actually stomach. So. There was actually a time when we went to Utah, Colorado, we went on like a four day excursion and every single meal was a burrito. Breakfast, breakfast lunch burrito. and dinner was a breakfast burrito because breakfast burritos are much bigger out west. Not so big here on the east coast. So um, we didn't have a lot of options so my wife learned how to make them. And guys, before we get into this, I am not a chef, she is not a chef. We have zero formal cooking training. So for those of you out there that are gonna be like, you're an idiot, you're doing that wrong, you're doing this, blah, blah. Okay. We don't care. We don't care. We're just showing you what we do, people. So this is how we do the breakfast burritos. But the basic idea here is that um, if you guys don't like doing carbs, if you're on the low-carb thing, then you can do this post-workout. If you don't care about carbs, you can do it anytime. If you want to change the ingredients a little bit, feel free. Um, it's just a real basic thing. We're, we're actually thinking about maybe doing these cooking videos pretty regularly since our gym is currently closed down. Yeah. So yeah, Elena, right. so breakfast burritos, what, what, what do we need? So for breakfast, breakfast burritos. burritos, you are gonna definitely need a carton of eggs and we love to use farm fresh eggs. Uh, we're pretty fortunate enough to get some from across the street. My mom has someone who has a bunch of chickens, so they're always different colors, which is really cool. So we need, you need, for two burritos, we're gonna make two burritos today. So you need six eggs, about three eggs per burrito. So this burrito's gonna have a lot of protein in it. Then what you're gonna need is find yourself an onion. This is just a small yellow onion. It really doesn't matter what kind you use. If you don't have an onion, you can use green onions, like sure. two green onions. That'll work too. So you got lots of peppers. What kind of peppers do you Oh have? yes, we love peppers. So this is our very favorite, it's a poblano pepper. You uh, wanna just chop that up nice and fine, but this is kind of like medium hot. It's actually my very favorite taste. Brian really likes it too. We're actually growing some outside in Brian's burrito box. Um, then we have a jalapeno. So one Jalapeno. Thing, yes, one thing you wanna do is make sure that you, you taste test your jalapeno, because some are hotter than others. So you wanna make sure that if you don't like really, really hot peppers, you wanna, you wanna test this out. I like extremely hot peppers, so but I do not like the taste of habanero peppers. Right, yeah, yeah. So if you have suggestions, leave them in the comment box down below. I think habaneros taste like junk. Uh, I like the heat, I don't like the taste. So if you have an excellent hot tasting pepper <laughs> that tastes better than habaneros, leave it in the thing below. So you want to use half of this. Chop that guy yeah. up. Then for a little bit of sweetness, we have these sweet baby uh, bell peppers. I don't really like the big bell peppers, but if you have them, you can use them. They're just not as sweet and easy to chop. I'm really into convenience. <laughs> so these guys, my favorite is red and orange. Again, if you have a different color or you don't have them at all, you don't have to use them. They just kind of offset the heat really well. The avocado is more for garnish. I'm obsessed with avocados. I love them on my burritos. I kind of put them on later um, because they kind of get a little Warm when you put them in the burrito and it's kind of doesn't do as well when you wrap it up so you want to cut this up and save it for later same thing with the lime you want to cut this lime up and then one thing that I like to do is just squeeze it uh, at the end so it's an awesome garnish and then another thing you want to use is cilantro again also outside we're growing a bunch of herbs we have a bunch of cilantro one quick tip Brian if you're gonna have cilantro it stays a lot better when you put it in water so you can go ahead and do that. We chop a whole bunch of this stuff up. I also put this in the burrito mix, but also we garnish with it as well. Now, I like to put uh, breakfast meat in my breakfast burritos. Some people put in chorizo, some people like bacon, some people like spam, some people, what, knock yourself out. If you don't want any meat in your breakfast burrito, don't put any meat in your breakfast burrito. Um, we actually use a brand that rhymes with Himmy Bean <laughs> Sausage. Um, super healthy. That's super healthy. <laughs> Don't judge me. Look, I eat what I can eat, man. I absolutely do. If you guys like uh, sausage pork. near your pork, uh, if you guys like sausage from a local farmer, if you guys do don't want to do sausage and you want to do something else, do that. But uh, me personally, I go cheap because uh, I didn't grow up with a ton of money, so I have a special taste for very cheap foods. 
That's so good. Then also what you're gonna need is some wonderful cheese. We just use uh, like four cheese, Mexican taco cheese. You can use whatever kind of cheese you really like. We use a lot of cheese. We use a ton of cheese. We said Mexican. one cup, but we use a lot of cheese. It's Probably like five. No, I'm just kidding. You'll see what, yeah. So it'll be like maybe one to two cups of cheese. Um, and we'll be using it all over the place, basically. Same thing with salsa. Salsa, you can make your own salsa if you want, honestly. Uh, we don't really do that because we don't really take the time to do that. But um, we, we're saying three tablespoons of salsa, but in reality, we probably put more than that on, especially me. So yeah, and at the end we have like taco sauces that we like to put on. Yeah, like street sauce street, that street you can sauce. get from like food truck type of places. We'll show you those in a little bit. Um, but right now, uh, what what else are we doing? You also need a big burrito wrap, flour tortilla wrap. We like the extra large. Yep. Go ahead and get that. It wraps really well. We're going to make two of these today. So is that everything we need? That's everything we need. Right? All right. So uh, what's the now, just like on cooking shows, we don't actually oh. have any of these prepared right now. So we're going to do that. By the end, you're going to have that. <laughs> but I did actually chop oh. everything up. So everything's kind of chopped up and labeled. There's the jalapenos. Just like anything else, preparation. Poblanos. Yep. You just get it done so yeah. that... A lot of times, because what happens is uh, we do eat these post workouts, we eat them for breakfast, I eat them pretty much nonstop. So she'll make like eight and then just yeah. wrap them up in foil and put them in oh, the right. in the refrigerator and then I can just run by, grab it, throw it in the microwave, not in the foil, and then <laughs> yeah. and then just reheat it. But if we're running low on time, then we always have stuff chopped up in the refrigerator so you can just run by, throw a bunch in a pan. You don't need to measure out, it's not that important. And, then, uh, and a little bit goes a long way. Like absolutely. if you don't have a lot of ingredients, you just use a little bit, you know, and you can use this all week long. And one of the things that we learned is when you put the burrito like wrapped up in the foil in the refrigerator and then you take it back out later, I don't know, Brian likes that a lot better. I like that a lot better because Settles. when you heat it up, kind of the cheese and everything kind of mixes Put in. Together. But I like leftovers, so you, you figure it out. It's not a big deal. What happens, <laughs> <laughs> what's the first thing you need to do. You want to get a nice pan. We use cast iron pans and you want to put some butter in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So the butter is obviously now we use a lot of butter because we actually are more protein fat diet people than we are carb people. Um, but we use a lot. We use a lot of butter. Yeah. A lot of butter. So you get a bunch of butter on a pan so that nothing sticks. And then yep. what do you do? You want to crack the, all the eggs. I crack them right in the pan because you're going to scramble them anyway. If you want more fluffy burrito eggs, you can take a bowl and put the eggs in the bowl and like whisk it all real nice. So. You do some of that right now. This is where you like uh, snobby cooking people are gonna be like, I would never eat eggs that were mixed up in a pan, but like whatever, man. Like I've got very little time. She's got very little time. We mix it in the pan. Don't judge me. So we mix it in the pan with something like this and you just swirl it all around until it starts fork. to peak it. <laughs> Your fork, but I like to use this guy. So it gets nice and scrambled eggy. Whippy. Whippy of medium high heat. And then turn that heat back down to like a low medium and then start putting your ingredients in. I, there's so no- So you dump in the eggs with the, in the pan? Into eggs in the pan, get them to be more scrambled egg-like. And then as a, you don't want to wilt your vegetables in there first. So what you want to do is then add your diced onion, your diced, all your diced peppers and kind of mix them in. And then what I like to do is turn off my heat. Turn it off. Then, <laughs> and then what you want to do is add the sausage after that. And then basically you're making like a big mixture of all this yummy stuff. Almost like a big scrambled egg. A huge. Of peppers, onions, sausage, sa salsa. Literally whatever you want to put in it. You don't want to put too much salsa and then it gets kind of watery. So I like to kind of gauge that, but it does create a real nice moisture for when it's inside the burrito and a little more taste. Um, so currently all the peppers, all the eggs, all the, eggs. the onions, Cilantro. Cilantro and a cilantro little bit of cheese there. is in the pan cooking up, mm -hmm. basically just being scrambled. Yeah, what I like to do with the cheese, and this is just personal preference, is I then, after I turn off the heat, put the cheese all on top, like almost like a big circle on top of the pan. Absolutely. And then when I go to get it out of the pan, it's a lot easier. It stays in one piece. It's not falling all over the place. I've just found that to be a good tip. A good tip. Right. Now, from, from there, it's time to put the eggs in the... Well, burrito. While well, it's so yeah, so while it's sitting there, you get your flour tortilla, okay. and you turn on. What we use is a panini maker, and we like make it like flat, and so we turn it on to high heat. Just like a chipotle. Just like a chipotle. Chipotle. Pretend you're at your 
Bottle, right? <laughs> so just like there, like they, they stamp it down, same yes. thing we do. We just stamp it down on the panini maker. Mm -hmm. Once it gets hot enough to be pliable, then it? literally yeah. start throwing things on. So while the actual burrito is warming up, I'm actually tearing out sheets of tin foil in like a square foot size. So like 12 inch by 12 inch that you're actually gonna wrap the burrito in. Now, you actually like to put that whole thing, you put the hot burrito on top of the foil mm -hmm. on top of a plate because it's a little bit easier. I do. Then you sprinkle a little bit of cheese, right? I do. I have a secret. I like to have the cheese at the bottom of the burrito as well. And then we wrap the burrito. So this is something that we're not good at, so don't judge us. This is something we're very new to. And again, I've only learned how to do this from watching people at Chipotle. Right. So judging by their standard, I'm not as good at them. And probably someone who knows how to roll a burrito probably is yeah. very upset at people at Chipotle. We are, so We are very sorry. Don't judge me. <laughs> So, if you have followed all these steps correctly, you should have yourself a burrito that is wrapped up. Now, again, me personally, I actually like them better after they've been right. re-microwaved up because it kind of mixes everything together. Uh, and I typically don't eat things as soon as you get them done anyway. I'm typically too busy doing something else. So I come back, I heat it up. Now, what else do you add to it? You add the lime and also some sauce and other things, right? So, yeah. why don't you tell them about that? Okay. Right <laughs> okay. So, what I like to do personally is for my burrito, I'll make brines, but then for mine, I'll add a bunch of lime juice on top of mine, and then I'll add even more cilantro. I just love it, I think it's incredible. And then for me, I like to use a, a um, for my salsa, it'll just be more of a, an authentic type salsa. Some street sauces I really love, uh, Brian loves We eat these a lot, I'm trying those. to cover the thing, but this is basically like, it's like street sauce so that you, you get from like just, a food truck, and you literally just, yeah. burrito in this hand, sauce, bite. So easy. It's yep. awesome. Yep. She likes to do like lime and like normal stuff. I oh, like avocado. I also put avocado on top of mine. I like the cool with the heat with the cheese. So I like mine like that, but he likes the taco sauce. So it's either salsa it. or taco sauce. Yeah, do it any way you want. Absolutely. It's awesome. But basically, uh, that is exactly what we do at least every week. We probably, yeah. probably prepare some of these and then just eat them throughout the week. But um, it's definitely one of my go-tos that is a regular staple in my diet. And when I was really, really sick, Oh. That was pretty much one of the only things I could eat. Yeah, it was so. like easier on your stomach. Yeah. And also for me, like not all the time do I want to put this whole thing in my tummy. So I'll put some in like little containers where there's no carbs. And I'll be able to just, you know, sprinkle a little cheese on there in the morning. And there I have, oh yeah, I'll have just like a no carb, no starchy carb version of the burrito. Mm -hmm. And it tastes amazing. Absolutely, and burrito bowl. Anything where you add a little bit of fresh herbs on it and a little lemon juice. Or, or cheese and salsa. Or cheese and salsa or lime juice. It's just going to taste incredible and you're getting everything you need for the day. Um, another video we might do will just be something where we do these little flour or corn tortillas. They're little tacos. So I'm more of like the taco girl and he's more of the burrito guy. But today we're doing burritos. In reality, we said we're making two burritos, but we've never made two burritos make, in our life. We make like eight. Yeah, we make like eight and then we eat as much as we want. She usually makes some tacos. Yeah. So we just have a bunch of little like rolled up tin foil Fun treasures thing. in the refrigerator just waiting for coming inside out of the woods or after a workout and, and just eating. So yeah. uh, it's it's a really, really good way, just quick way to get around. It's a simple way you can take it with you anywhere you go. Yeah, super cheap too. Yeah, right? super, super, super cheap, cheap way to eat. So guys, uh, that's pretty much what we do for breakfast burritos. Again, you can use these either post-workout or if you don't care about carbs, you can eat them at any time. Yep. If you really care about carbs, you can make breakfast burritos. But yeah, very easily. Breakfast burrito bowls. Breakfast burrito bowls. Yeah. That's what I meant to say. Anyway, <laughs> it's a really easy way to uh, to just get a bunch of calories in. I hope you guys did enjoy this. If you guys do have some suggestions for some peppers that are as hot as habaneros but don't taste like the habanero taste. Also, if you guys have some suggestions for uh, some other things that you'd like to see or other things that you think we should try cooking, mm -hmm. um, yeah. we're just gonna share with you guys a couple of dinners that we do pretty regularly and things like that if this does well. So if you do like it, please hit the subscribe button. If you guys do wanna see more from Elena and her workouts and things like that, you can check her out. Your YouTube is what? Elena Alzer. <laughs> Common spelling, <laughs> right? So if you look up Alzer, you're gonna find us. Anyway, you can find me on Instagram at Elena Rose 620. Yes. So guys, thank you so much for spending a little bit of your morning with us. We thank you so much for everything. We're going to actually go cook the breakfast burritos, get you guys more footage, and then I'm going to eat them all. And we'll show you guys the finished product and all that. But we do thank you guys so much for joining us. Until we catch up again, go out do something amazing. Realize, keep working hard, people. Eat your breakfast burritos. Be nice to each other. Bye. <laughs>
No. <sighs> oh. This one's gonna be good. This one's gonna win it. I'm going over the top on this one. We're gonna go back here. All right, pass all the lights, pass everything. Here it goes. Uno, dos, ha! Oh, one down. Go! 